Hi everyone, my name is Marlene and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are someone who has been following current events, you probably know that the FIFA World Cup is happening right now in Qatar. And I am not someone that is big into soccer or football. I don't even know how often the World Cup, I think it happens. Does the World Cup happen every year? I feel like it happens every year. Usually I try to follow the World Cup and try and catch the matches or games, but this particular year I felt like it was a very busy year and I'm trying to start a YouTube channel, for example. However, last week, Morocco <laughs> made it into the semifinals and I was just inundated with messages in my family group chat and lots of people posting on Twitter and Instagram about how they were so excited that an African team had made it into the semifinals. And in honor of Morocco making the semifinals, I decided to make today's video where I will be predicting who is going to win this weekend's games, the game between Morocco and Croatia and also the game between Argentina and France. And so if you're interested in this, please keep watching. For today's tutorial, we are going to be using a data set that I found on Kaggle. And this is just an open data set that someone put together for the community. And the data set contains different information about teams and matches that have been played in the World Cup, dating back, I think, to the 90s up until very recently, um, just before the World Cup started in 2022. It's a really interesting data set, and we will be using it to predict who is going to win this weekend's game. I am going to be using Random Forest for today's tutorial to be able to take in, we're going to feed our model, our Random Forest model, um, some information, and then we're going to expect it to give us some predictions based off of that information. Is a specific team likely to win or lose a game? So let's go ahead and get into the code right now. Okay, so to get started, we are going to be importing a number of different dependencies. The first Python package that I'm importing here is something called Ibis, and I really love Ibis. <laughs> Ibis is a package that I've been using for about a year now, and if you're working with large data sets, for example, that confident memory, or if you are just trying to do some EDA in a more aesthetically pleasing way, <laughs> like I try to always look for, then Ibis is a really great alternative. It has um, rich natively built into it. And so you're going to see it as I'm using, um, as I'm going along in the tutorial. I'm also importing NumPy, I'm importing Matplotlib, Seaborn, and a bunch of other modules from Scikit-Learn. So let's go ahead and load that data into a table called matches. So we're going to say ibis.read just to read in that data and it's called international matches CSV. So let's run that. And then now I want to be able to get a better understanding of that data. So I'm going to do some EDA by um, calling matches.head. Again, ibis is, uses very similar syntax to pandas. So here we have just a preview of the data set. We have a date column, uh, the home team, the away team, and some information about the team's continents. We also have the rank in the FIFA World Cup. And so obviously this is not all of the information, it's just summarizing it because it's quite a long table with a lot of columns. But if we want some information and to take a look at the columns in more detail, we can just go ahead and type out matches.info and let's run that. And I mean, <laughs> look, at, I just, I mean, just look at that. That's just nice. It just looks very colorful and very just nice. Um, so here on the screen we have, and this is Ibis, by the way, using Rich. Um, so we have our date column. We have the type of our, uh, our column. We also have um, some information about whether a column contains nulls or doesn't contain nulls and what percentage of that column uh, is actually nulls. So if you see here, starting from the home team goalkeeper score all the way up to the away team mean midfield score, um, all of those columns contain some nulls. So we want to clean that up a bit later on and we will go ahead and do that. So I just want a comprehensive list, a short comprehensive list of the column names that we have in this data set. So I'm just going to run matches.columns to take a look at that. 
And here are all of the columns in our data set. Now I should mention that because IBIS is still a new project, there are some features that I would like to use in today's tutorial that are not present in IBIS at the current moment. So I want to go ahead and switch over to a pandas data frame as we continue. And so I'm going to choose, I'm just going to run matches equals matches dot um, execute. And this is just going to return a pandas data frame from IBIS and save that into the matches variable. Now <laughs> we can go ahead and move on to pre-processing our data set. And for this, I want to just take, I want to start out by taking all of the columns that I saw contained a lot of nulls in them. So from that goalkeeper score up into the bottom, and I want to just fill uh, all of the rows or all of the cells that have a null value in them with the number zero. And the reason why we're doing this is because a lot of models, machine learning models, can't actually handle nulls. They work very well with numeric data, but sometimes like giving it an all might throw it off. So just to be safe, we're going to do this. So let's just run matches. Let's pass in all of those columns and let's just copy all of this. And let's paste it here, dot fill. No one, con please don't comment on <laughs> the way my syntax is looking right now. I know it's not great, but it's going to work. So let's just preview and see what the, what the table looks like now. And if you look through here, we have a bunch of columns that have just now had the null values being replaced by a zero. And that's just going to be better for our model uh, to understand. Now, next, like I mentioned before, our model understands specific type of data a lot better than others. And what we want to do is to transform some of the data that we have into numeric values. So what we're going to do for this, the first value we want to change into a numeric value is we want to take the away team names and instead of using a name allocate them a number and we also want to take the day the specific day of the week so maybe a Monday or a Sunday uh, and we'll use this as a predictor later on to be able to determine whether a team plays better on a specific day of the week and if that will uh, lead to a change in our prediction so to do that let's go ahead and type out matches uh, let's say away team code is what we're going to call this and that's going to uh, get the data from the uh, let's say away team and then oh sorry we want to convert this <laughs> into uh, a number so to do that we're going to say ask type and we're going to change this into a category and get the codes for that. And that should return a number for each um, name that's in the away column there. And then we also want to create a day column or day uh, code. And this is just going to give us the day of the week. Uh, let's say date column here. And we'll do the same thing here. We're going to, no, actually here, we can just get this by saying DT day of week. And that should give us a number in place of each day of the week. So let's run that and let's take a look at what this looks like in the table. And if we look right on the end there, we have our way team code. So each uh, away team be being represented by a number. And then we have the day code where six, for example, represents Sunday. When we are creating our model, we want our model to be able to take in a bunch of different information and then make a prediction um, on how likely a team is to win or lose a game based off of the information it's being fed. Part of the information that we want to feed our model is the location. So being able to identify whether or not uh, the game is being played in a neutral location in the data set. So we know that the FIFA World Cup is going to be in a neutral location except for, every, for everyone except for Qatar. And so we want to the model to be able to incorporate that information. We also want to have 
the model understand whether or not penalties took place in a specific game in the data set. And so we're going to change all of that into zeros and ones. We also want to be able to represent whether a team in the data set won or lost with a zero, one, two. And so we actually have, if you type in matches.home home team result. This is actually a, a column that contains uh, some information in terms of whether the home team actually won, drew, or lost. And so we want to represent a win as a one uh, and a draw and a loss to be a zero. And we're going to use this information later on to be able to train our model and ultimately our model will uh, return a one or a zero to let us know whether it is more likely that a team won or lost. So let's go ahead and write the code to be able to do this. So for the location, for it to be a neutral location, we're going to uh, call this new column neutral, let's call it neutral location, lock. And we're going to take, actually, we're going to take the uh, neutral location column and we are going to say if this column, if it is a neutral location, so if that equals true, then it's going to return a one and we'll have that be an int type. And then the next one we're going to do is we are going to grab the penalty. We're going to make a penalties, uh, penalties, I hope that's how you spell it, <laughs> penalties column. And that is going to draw from the matches um, shootout column. And if shootout is, if a shootout did happen, so if that's yes, then we are going to return a one. And if it didn't, it's going to return a zero. And then finally, we want our target, which is whether a team won or lost. And we're going to use the, again, let's put this in brackets. Um, we are going to use the home team results column and we're going to say if this equals a win then we return a one and if it doesn't if it's a loss or a draw it's going to return a zero so let's run this and let's take a look at that table great so if you go scroll to the end there <laughs> you'll see these new columns that we made the neutral location one, the penalty one, and the target one predicting whether a team won or lost. Now we are about ready to build a model for this tutorial. We are going to be using Random Forest, and this is a type of machine learning model that can pick up on nonlinearities. So for example, what I mean by this is, for example, we have our away team code here, and each team is represented by a specific number, but this number doesn't necessarily correlate linearly to the how well or badly a team performs. And so uh, models like Random Forest can actually pick up on this, whereas linear models, some other linear models can struggle to actually uh, be as nuanced. And so to be able to start and create our um, model, we're going to use the scikit-learn random uh, random forest classifier that we imported a bit earlier on. So let's go ahead and start to write the code for that. So let's use the argument in estimators and we're going to set that to 50. And in estimators is the number of individual decision trees that we train when we start to train our model. And a random forest is actually a series of decision trees that actually have slightly different parameters. And the higher the number, of uh, decision trees that you have in your model, the longer it's going to take for your algorithm to run, but the more accurate it could potentially be. So we're setting it to sift to 50. We're also going to use the n um, sample uh, sample splits. Uh, let's see. Sorry, we're going to use the min <laughs> sample split argument and we're going to set this to 10 and this is just the number of samples that we want to have in a decision tree before splitting them into a different 
into different nodes. And you want to play around with this number because it could also affect the accuracy as well. We're also going to use the random state um, argument here and set that to one. And basically this is just going to make sure that any data that you feed in, if it is the same data, it's going to give you the same sort of result or accuracy amount um, if you're not changing anything else. So let's go ahead and run this. <laughs> Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes. Great. We are just going to go ahead and create our training and testing data sets. And to be able to split these two, we're going to take all of the data that was uh, that's in our data set from before 2022, and that's going to be our training data set. And all of the data that was that's in the data set from after 2022 is going to be our testing data. So let's go ahead and write the code for this. We're going to start by creating a variable called train, and that's going to equal matches. Let's grab the date column. And we're going to say anything that was created before 2022. 0101 is going to be in the training data set and we're pretty much going to take the same line of code and we're going to change to say anything that was created after 2022 is going to be in our testing data set. So let's run this as well. So now we are going to choose the predictors and the predictors are the columns that we're going to feed into our model to incorporate into the model so it can fit and make decisions based off of this information. And for me, I just looked at the columns <laughs> that were available. Again, we can just run matches.columns if we wanna see the available data. And I just looked at the columns and I thought to myself, which columns specifically will make, will add to this prediction? Do I think will affect the game? And so let me go ahead and write those predictors. I'm going to save them into an array called predictors. And let me go ahead and type those out. Let's say the first one is going to be away team code. as well. And yeah, so these are all of the predictors that we are going to feed into our model for it to make a decision. So let's run that just to save it. And now we're going to actually train our model based off of the predictors that we fit in and um, also based off of the targets that we have, whether or not a team won or lost. So let's go ahead and fit our model. We do this by calling our if the fit um, method on that. And then we're going to call our training data set and we're going to pass in the predictors just to be able to get the columns um, that we want. And then we're going to train. We're going to grab the target um, column that will contain a one or a zero based off of whether a team one or lost. And that's going to train the model to let it know that based off of these predictors, this was the outcome and that will help it to ultimately uh, be able to predict in the future. So let's run that. Great, that worked. Okay, so now what this means, what we just did right now is to be able to fit our model so that it is able to make predictions based off of some data that we feed into it and it will give us a zero or a one based off of that data in terms of did the team win or did the team lose. So we're going to now feed it in some information from the testing data set. To do this, let's go ahead and create a variable called prids, which is going to be our an array of predictions and we'll run our if dot predict. And we're going to pass in our testing uh, data set and the predictors and specifically pass in the columns that are in the predictors there. And so let's run this. Great. And now we should have our predictions. Just to let you know what it returns, let's go ahead and visualize this quickly by getting the 10, the first 10 items from our prids, should be a prids um, array. And there you can see we either have a zero or a one. And this is the model letting us know that based off of the information you gave me, I think this home team either lost or won. So now we can go ahead and test the accuracy of our model. And to do this earlier on, I uh, already imported accuracy score from scikit-learn. And so 
we're going to save our accuracy to a variable called ACC. And then let's go ahead and use accuracy score. We're going to pass in test uh, target. And this is the actual values that we should have gotten or that are in the data set. And then we're going to pass in our prediction values and see how accurate our model was. So let's run this. And our model actually did pretty good. It's 70% accurate. Okay, <laughs> our model is working. We are getting a 70% accuracy rate. And so we are now ready to predict who is going to win this weekend's game and become the World Cup champion. And so because I don't want this tutorial to be too long, I left out a bit of a section here in the video. I just want to explain what I did. I went ahead and collected some information from FIFA's official website about the most recent rankings of the four teams. I went ahead and I got the most recent information so that we can use this to be able to predict. I isolated these teams in the data set and also got like there was some information that I couldn't really find online and so I wanted to use some of the data that already existed and so this you know this whole uh, notebook is going to be on my github page I have put a link below if you want to go through this whole process of isolating the data but I'll show you the final data set that I got for for, for example Argentina versus France so it's called finals and this is what it looks like. It just is a data set that contains um, one row that includes in that row is the France being the home team and Argentina being the away team. And in the second row, we have Argentina being the home team and France being the away team. And we can even uh, take a look at this by saying finals. And let's go ahead and just call the home team. Um, and let's also call the OA team here just to better visualize the data that we have in this data set. And there you can see in the first row, France is our home team, uh, Argentina is away, Argentina in the second row is the home team and France is, is away. So <laughs> let's go ahead and make the prediction. We are going to pass in our finals predictors rows into our model to make the prediction. And our model is going to return to us either a zero or a one. A one is going to represent that the home team won that match. And a zero is going to represent that the home team lost that match. So we should be expecting to get two numbers from uh, this data frame that we will pass in as the prediction results. Um, and that will let us know whether the home team in that specific row either won or lost the game. We are going to create a variable called finals which is going to hold those predictions. We are going to pass call our if, which is our uh, model, and we are going to call predict on that and get, we're passing in the finals data frame, and we are just going to get the predictors columns that we specified earlier on. And let's run the model. <laughs> the model is run, the predictions are ready. And so once we print this, <laughs> we are going to know who is going to win Sunday's match between either France or Argentina. So let's go ahead and get our prediction now. So let's print out finals, print, and the winner, the prediction is France. <laughs> So there is a one when France is the home team and this from the second row, there's a zero from when Argentina is the home team. So our model is predicting with 70% accuracy, there's a 70% chance that France is most likely to win this weekend's games. So I don't know if that's good news or bad news to someone out there, I'm not sure, but these are just the predictions that I'm getting from the model. Let's move on and also do the same thing with Morocco versus Croatia. Again, I have left all of the code for isolating the two teams um, and the specific information from these teams um, into their own data sets. And I created this finals data set for Morocco and Croatia. Similarly, like we had above, we have two rows. The first row, Morocco is the home team. In the second row, Croatia is the, own, is the home team. And so we're gonna run uh, this again into our tables called finals 
panels too this time, but we're going to call a pretty similar um, method like the one that we did above. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it here to get our predictions. But let's say finals two predictions. And we're going to check who in this group won and, and just see what the predictions are here. So let's run this. And now that we have our predictions, let's write it down. Finals two, Fritz. And <laughs> the winner for the second match between Morocco and Croatia is going to be, oh, <laughs> Croatia. I'm sorry, I am, I am personally rooting for Morocco to win. But according to our model, according to the statistics that we have, Croatia is more likely to win. There's a 70% chance that Croatia will probably win this weekend's game. So I'm going to end today's tutorial here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I do want to point out that I am not a gambling person and I would not encourage you to use this uh, model for gambling or things of that nature. <laughs> um, but it, I, we will see who actually wins this weekend. And if the team I actually predicted uh, did win, please make sure to tweet at me or let me know in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video as well, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel and share it if you enjoyed it as well. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.